Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes. This is Beatrice right here. And on today's Alex and Auto segment, I was asked to talk about turbochargers and superchargers. We're right here under the hood of my Jaguar Super V8 because as the name implies, this has a supercharger. So if I lift this cover right here off the engine, you can't really see the supercharger, but you can see the intercoolers right here. And the supercharger is under this location right in the valley of the V engine. Now, in a nutshell, the difference between a turbocharger and a supercharger is that a turbocharger is driven off of waste gases from the vehicle. So the exhaust manifold in the vehicle would actually funnel right into a turbocharger, and a supercharger is driven off of the belt and pulley in the vehicle. So off the crankshaft, there's a pulley, there's a belt attached to that, goes off to a pulley right up here on the supercharger, and that's how this is driven. Now the goal of both superchargers and turbochargers is to force more air into an engine. Because the more air you get into an engine, the more fuel you can put in the engine. The more air and fuel combined that you can get in the engine, the more power you can generate. That's why this 4.2 liter V8 right under the hood of this Jaguar Super V8 produces just about as much power as the 6 liter V8 right under the hood of this Saab 97X Aero right behind it. Even though we do have extra displacement in that engine, the power output is relatively similar. Now obviously each design has pros and cons, but in general the biggest pro of a supercharger is instant power delivery. Because this supercharger is driven via a pulley with the engine, the supercharger is always spinning at some fixed ratio between whatever the engine is spinning and whatever they designed the supercharger to spin at. So sometimes that could be two to one, so the supercharger is spinning twice as fast as the engine. It really depends on the design characteristics of the supercharger and the engine. Now because that's always a direct linear relationship, there's always something going on with a supercharger. So right at idle, you get a lot more oomph out of it. Now the disadvantage of superchargers in general is that it does cost something to run that large supercharger right up there on the engine. And that cost is a reduction in total engine output. So the gross power output of this engine is actually much higher than the net output of the engine because the supercharger can consume up to 20 to 25 percent of the entire engine's output. Now those percentages vary based on supercharger design and engine design like other things, but you can figure in this vehicle right here, which is almost 400 horsepower, it's 390 horsepower in this particular model year, if this supercharger is consuming about 25% of the total engine output, then this engine is really producing nearly 500 horsepower, it's just that only about 400 horsepower are available to the user. Now the reason turbochargers are very popular is because turbochargers are more efficient in general than superchargers at doing what they do. And the reason for that is because they're using what we call waste energy and waste gas from the engine. That's because the exhaust coming out of the engine is what is spinning the turbocharger. Now it's not true waste energy because there's always going to be a toll because you have that turbocharger in the exhaust stream. But the toll is not going to be as large as a supercharger right like this spinning off the crankshaft of the engine. That added efficiency is why we're starting to see turbocharged and supercharged engine designs from Volvo as well as Volkswagen. The goal there is to improve efficiency as well as improve low end performance. So they have a supercharger to give you instant off the line acceleration and then after a predetermined set point it transitions from that supercharger over to the turbocharger for improved efficiency. Now again things vary based on the engine and the method of forced induction under the hood. But in general a supercharged engine doesn't have a very square horsepower to torque ratio. But if you take a look at turbocharged engines they typically have either equal pound foot of torque ratings to their horsepower rating or actually slightly higher pound feet of torque. This is really obvious when you take a look at Mercedes and BMW's latest turbocharged engines. Those really produce a great deal of torque even though they're also producing a great deal of horsepower. So which design is better? It really depends on what you're after. There are some engine plumbing concerns to consider when you're taking a look at superchargers versus turbochargers. Now a turbocharged engine, you have to find somewhere to put those turbos and they can take up a little bit of extra room. That's why you're seeing in latest Mercedes and BMW models, they're putting the turbos right here in the valley of the V rather than on the edges of the vehicle. Two turbochargers on an engine can also cause uneven crankshaft forces because the two turbochargers may not be spinning at exactly the same rate and it ca can cause one bank of cylinders to producing slightly more power than the other. That's not too much of a real concern in modern times with the electronic control systems that we have on modern vehicles, but that can be a little bit of a concern depending on the design. Now superchargers, again, they're a little bit less efficient, but they do give you that instant low end torque. Superchargers do that also because there's a lot less plumbing going on in this engine. You can see the supercharger's right in there, 
the intercoolers are these gray bars right here on either side of the engine. And that means that the total length between the intake to the turbocharger or the supercharger and the engine is actually quite a bit reduced in this design right here. That's because we have these water to air intercoolers. That means there's another radiator up here that you have to cool, pump water around through these intercoolers. It's a little bit more complex on the plumbing side, but it does shorten that air intake path. Since there's less air going on there, the volume of the air between the supercharger and the engine is smaller, there's less to compress, so you get less lag on an instant uh, acceleration type basis. However, a turbocharger, you typically have an air-to-air -air intercooler. So the turbos are back there, they're compressing the air, air runs right along here to the front of the vehicle. You have a large radiator that's an intercooler, help cool that air directs it back to the engine, there's a lot more volume going on there. So when you press on the accelerator pedal and your turbo spools up, that air all has to compress before it can start helping the engine, and that does take a little bit more time. That's part of why you get turbo lag in a turbo engine. And lastly, in general terms, supercharged engines tend to produce a little bit less top end power than your average turbocharged engine that just has to do with the design of the compressor. One last consideration for the supercharger is that they do tend to be a little bit easier to install in an aftermarket tuning style capacity. So if you're looking at adding force induction, for instance, to your LS2 engine, then a supercharger is going to be the easier way to go. It's going to take more effort to install a turbocharger in that V8 engine than a supercharger. You just bolt it onto the top of the engine, you replace your belts and your pulleys right up there, maybe you add an uh, intercooler like this engine has right here, and off you go. It is an awful lot simpler than adding turbochargers to an existing engine. So the bottom line is it really depends on what you're after. Turbochargers, in very general terms, are more efficient. Superchargers, in very general terms, give you more lower end power, and the design ends up being a little bit simpler. They both achieve the same goals, however. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos, and I'll see you next week.